Okay, sir, is that it? Just the A1 sauce, the Gatorade, and the condoms? Mm-hmm. Your total is going to be $7.36. Okay, here's $20.50. Oh Lord, oh Lord, um, 7, 20, 20, 5, um, and then, um, oh God, oh God, oh, oh my God. everybody and welcome to another unbelievable episode of the low budget show with Damon Millard. I'm Damon Millard. Thank you for tuning in. You joined us for a good one. On today's show we have guest Cole Cooper. Taking a leak? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll include this. Cole swings by. Oh yes! We talk about his band Night Terror. That's night with a K. Skateboarding. I'm really stoked on it. And his recent accident that left him pretty messed up. 12 days later I wake up in the hospital. Make sure you stick around for that. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and share with your friends. Let's jump right on in. Get a hold of me, it's Damon at DamonMillard.com. Let me know what you've been up to. Did you, uh, did you get your COVID vaccine yet? My cousin Bobby did. He says now he can change the channel on his TV with just his thoughts. But he's been working on that for years, so. But send me a message. I'll read it on the air. On the air. It's the internet. Like this one. This one comes to us from Kevin from Oklahoma. Uh, he points out um, an Easter egg that he found in episode 28. So look for that. I'll send you a copy of my... Uh, CD, physical copy of the CD. There's almost no more in existence, so if you have any, you're lucky. This is much more rare than like an M&M CD. I'll tell you that much for sure. He asks if the character Juggalo John is based on anybody in real life. Um, thanks for the message. Uh, Juggalo John is just a real life person. I don't understand the question. In fact, maybe this summer, We'll do an episode, uh, Juggalo John's origin story. Wouldn't that be cool? We'll do that. Now it's time for Street Jokes. So after Mother Teresa died, there was obviously no question if she was gonna go to heaven or hell. And immediate minor passing, she ascended to heaven and got the royal treatment. And uh, she, she really enjoyed herself. And after a few days, all of a sudden she spots Princess Diana. And for the first time in her life, she experiences jealousy and anger. So she looks around for St. Peter and eventually finds him and says, look, St. Peter, you know, I didn't even know humans could become angels. I thought that was just some Mormon stuff. But uh, I gotta ask, how come Princess Di has a halo and me, the last living saint, does it? And St. Peter shakes his head. It's a sweetheart. It's not a halo, that's a steering wheel. So now I want to talk about the opening sketch. It's titled Math is Hard, right? And obviously it's a little old. I think I shot it back in 2016. I've lost 35 pounds since then. I was super depressed and drinking and eating garbage food. I'm actually really embarrassed to do this. I don't really want to do, do this, but um, here's a before photo. I know. Holy shit, I did not want to show you guys that. Not pretty. It's, it's the worst I've ever been in my whole life. And uh, I've lost 35 pounds, so here I am now. Much better, right? It's, it's better. The way I was able to lose the weight was um, I stopped with expert advice from H&R Block. At H&R Block, we have many filing options to make it easy for you. Right now, you can get a refund advance loan for up to $3,500 no loan fees, and 0% APR. Offer ends February 28th. If you'd also like to lose 35 pounds, log on to H&R Block today. H&R Block. Remember, always bet on block. And that's the secret. Now what? Ooh, I'm going to Binghamton. I'm going there on Wednesday. It's Binghamton, New York. 
It's an hour south of Syracuse and it's an hour north of Scranton. Just imagine Scranton and Syracuse had a sex baby together. If you see me while I'm back in Binghamton and I owe you money, I didn't bring my wallet. Don't even need to ask me. I don't have it. Staying in the Holiday Inn. It's a big deal, baby. Got the deal on Priceline. 76 bucks a night. Yeah. We're gonna sneak the dog in the back door too, so. Yeah, baby, once a criminal, always a criminal. Yeah, it's gonna be a good trip. Uh, we're gonna go up, see my mom. I haven't seen my mom in like a year and a half because I'm scared to kill her, you know? I wanna kill her. Not till she has something to leave me. Then maybe we'll talk. Maybe I'll change my mind then, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not trying to get her 26 inch TV. <laughs> My mom don't make it, I'm gonna end up with a half a pack of Newports and a lot of debt. I'm not, no, but I haven't been there in a while, so we're gonna go up and uh, it, it just reminded me, I didn't talk about this on the show. Cause actually, I think this, is, this happened right before I relaunched the low budget show. Um, I did a show in Binghamton at the Relief Pitcher and I won't ever go back to the Relief Pitcher. They got some real scumbag bartender there who, um, I mean, he should be, Damn! With a plunger. What a gross place. Won't be going back to the relief pitcher. I would avoid it at all costs. Zero stars. You ever wonder like what the middle of a glory hole would be like? That's the relief pitcher. Anyway, so I did a show that I don't really remember anymore. I, that's how bad I ended up blacking out that night. I don't remember what I said on stage. This kid I grew up with, Kenny. You might know him from my joke. He's in a wheelchair. Did I mention that? Did I say that? I must have, right? He's in a wheelchair, right? So I let him in for half price. Oh, this was the first time my daughter had ever seen me do stand-up. She got there late, of course. And in it, I talk about editing porno. And I talk about a lot of stuff I would never say in front of my daughter. So this kid, Kenny, he's in there and he's just a fucking mess heckling me for 45 minutes straight. And I just can't handle it anymore. He just kept yelling out, fire! Honestly speaking, it was one of the top 10 worst shows I've ever had. So at some point I just stop. I'm like, this guy's gotta go uh, or else I'm not telling another joke. Somebody went up behind him and just took his wheelchair and just like got him out the door. It was not good. I mean, I don't really remember it, but people say it wasn't good. Then we continued to drink all night. It was what it was. And then the next day we went out to breakfast, we went to Rolando's. One of the few things I like up there. Somehow they still charge you the same price for breakfast as they did in 1952. I don't know how they do it. My daughter's there with her boyfriend who I'm just meeting for like the first time. Technically I think I met him before, but I only remembered him from this time. All of a sudden he starts choking. He starts making this motion. That's the universal sign for I'm choking, or if you're making fun of somebody that they're not doing very, very good. So he was either saying, hey, you're not doing very good with your omelet, dame, or hey, help me out, bro. So I had to jump up, I run over there, and I gave the guy the Heimlich maneuver, just like in a movie. Except you know what's not like a movie? When you actually give somebody the Heimlich maneuver and it works, there's not like some big, moment where you're like, oh, I got it. It wasn't like a big old biscuit came flying out of his mouth or something. Just at some point it goes, thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like how Hollywood tries to sexy it up. Yeah, it, I almost didn't know at what point it worked, but at some point um, he started breathing again. So yeah, a hero, some say that. I started saying it first, but yeah, some people do say that. Yeah, at the end of the, the meal, I asked for the ticket and the waitress came up and she was like, oh, some guy over there got it for you. So he bought me breakfast. Yeah, so I saved a life. I got free breakfast. And with the money I saved from breakfast, I went over to the bodega right next door and I got a twisted tea and I started drinking real early because I was hung over. And that was how I used to deal with that. Yeah, so it was like 10 a.m. and I deserved a twisted tea. Hey, Dane, can I talk to you for a minute, bro? Oh, hey, everybody, look. 
It's Danny, my life coach. I just wanted to thank you for letting me crash on your couch for a couple days. And I'm going to get that 100 bucks back to you as soon as I can. Oh, yeah, sure, man. I'm, I'm glad I could help. No, I just, you know, I feel real bad. I probably never should have punched my landlord, you know? Just give him a couple days to cool off and I'll be out of your hair. I guarantee it. Yeah, I'm just a little busy doing the show, you know? No, but I wanted to thank you for something else, too. You know what I'm talking about. No, what? No, remember? You lent me your pen when mine ran out of ink so I could fill out my Walgreens job application? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's big time, you know? That's how you can tell you're a real motherfucker, you know? It's like, a lot of people want to ride in the limo, right? But what you want is someone who's willing to take the bus with you when that limo breaks down. Oprah said that, bro. Think about that. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah. But can I ask you a real question, though, bro? Can I ask you a serious question, bro? Did you eat my cold cuts? Cold cuts? I had cold cuts in the refrigerator, bro. Yeah, I think I did. Oh, man, I had mortadella in there, man. That's not Boar's Head 11.99. Oh, sorry, man. I was going to eat that before I went to probation, bro. I got a piss test today, too, and I don't know if I'm going to pass. That's okay, though, bro. I, you didn't know. You didn't know. I should clearly label my meats. I'm going to start putting my name on there, first and last name. You know, don't worry about it, D. Yeah, but we got that appointment 1 p.m. tomorrow. We're going to work on that smoking habit of yours, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to tackle that, bro. I'm proud of you, man. All right, I'm going to let you get back to the show, man. It's a good show. There is a Polish guy in the bar and bartender in TV. There is a guy in, on the roof of the building, of the high building, and he's going to jump. And the bartender says, will he jump? Polish guy says, <laughs> you know this. <laughs> and the guy, the bartender says, will he jump? And Polish guy says, yes, he, uh, he will not jump. He will not jump. They made bed. The guy jumps. And the bartender says, I cannot take your money because I, I saw this. I saw this uh, scene uh, one hour ago and I knew that he was jumping. And the police guy said, I, I, knew, I saw this, this, uh, this scene also, but I, I didn't think that he will jump. <laughs> Second time. <laughs> can, can you imagine more, more harsh joke, <laughs> joke about, about Polish mentality? <laughs> Everybody. Welcome back to the Low Budget Show, and joining me now is our guest, Cole Cooper. He is the guitarist for Night Terror, a painter, and my good friend. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Good to see Thanks, you. Man. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, totally. You're a guitarist in the band Night Terror. That's, that's Night with a K. We just started practicing again, so... Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really stoked on it. Uh, we've actually had that band for, for a long time. We started it back in 2007. The way it started is just like this epic love story because I was living in Portland, Oregon at the time and Kurt was living in Portland, Oregon. And we, we had just become best friends for my 25th birthday. We're at the bar and he goes, hey, bud, I got something for you. And I was like, oh, sick, you know. I was like, what, what is it? He's like, it's in the bathroom. And I was like, oh, yes, you know, like, it's going to be blow, you know. And so <laughs> I start walking to the bathroom and there's like people following me to the bathroom. And I was like, you know, what? it's my birthday. I'm doing the fucking blow. They can watch me. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not giving them the fucking birthday blow I got. I open the door. And there's an electric guitar and an amplifier 
Oh, and shit. I look at him and I'm like, dude, where's the fucking blow? You know, like, <laughs> and and he's like, I got you a guitar so you can learn to play guitar and I can learn to play drums and we can start a band together. Yeah. Because I had never played guitar before. So up to that point, you didn't even want to play guitar. No, I it's no, like, I just here, you're a guitarist play. now. Right? <laughs> yeah. He was a guitar is a guitarist. He's a really good guitarist. But he said that he wanted to learn drums and that if we both learned from zero, we could start a band together. And so that's how the band started. We both did not know how to use the instruments that we were picking up. That's a pretty good birthday gift, right? Yeah, yeah, it was good, yeah. Did you ever get the blow, though? I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> it's, it's hard to say. And that, that time was so fuzzy in that bar. <laughs> we pretty much owned that bar. And the bar was across the street from a place that we worked at the boss from the job that I worked at had a tab for me at the bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was so. like this alcoholic fucking like wet dream. And like, so I would just like ask for money for smokes, ask for money for like jukebox and like tell them like I needed. Yeah. I and needed then at the end of the week, your boss would pay the bar instead of you. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. So you got your first guitar then on your birthday yep. but yep. you have a passion for music i'm a classic rock connoisseur but i'm also yeah but you're like a library of music i remember that yeah music is like the one thing that like just registers like i can hear facts about it and it's just like tick 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 yeah you yeah. have a lot of obscure facts if you're watching this uh me and cole know each other because we used to work on construction uh together i have no skill. So I was just the cleanup guy. Uh, I would put the tape <laughs> on the wall and, and, and Cole's a very skilled painter. If you're in the New York city area, I'll tell you how to get a hold of, and you need some painting done. I'll tell you how to get rid of, get rid of Cole. God. I'll teach you. God damn it. What's going on there? <laughs> My sink. <laughs> yeah, that's your sink. He's not a good city. plumber, but he's a great painter. Uh, if, you, if you're in the New York City area and you need some painting done, stick around to the end of the interview and we'll teach you how to get a hold of Cole. I can't talk. <laughs> where, where, what we were just talking about. I feel like I'm the one with the brain damage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were talking about the band. and. Um... Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember like you'd bring your music and I'd, I'd have never heard of anybody and you'd give me all the facts and all the members and then all of the obscure bands that they were in before they got into that band. I'm a painter. I spend a lot of time by myself. You know, I love ACDC, but like, do I want to listen to ACDC once a week at 38 years old? Like, no, it's like you start yeah. to branch out and, yeah. and just like step into territories of, of music that I never thought I'd go to, but totally fucking like appreciate and, and love and like, like yeah. want to listen to Ethiopian jazz, you know, stuff like just, just real weird shit. I never even thought was on the, my radar till the day I die. I will be a fucking like rock and roll first over everything, but it all like goes from there though. <laughs> Two thousand and seven. That's when we first started having practice. I I didn't really learn how to play guitar until about seven years ago. But we, prior to that, we had managed to get some songs together. Yeah, and and uh, and we played some shows, and they were very punk in the idea of like we have no idea what we're doing, but we're fucking doing it. We were figuring and, it out, right? And on stage, yeah. I remember we were only getting paid in alcohol. Yeah. And, like that was it and um as a comic i've done that myself where how much does this gig pay and be like oh you just open bar and then like i'm like okay you're like, Sick. i am gonna punish you motherfuckers you should have yeah. gave me cash <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean like, I'll, I'll, I'll play here every single night yeah <laughs> we were always uh the opening act at that time so yeah. it was just like our slogan to us was open the show close the bar <laughs> yeah and there was one night where we were like asleep after like the second band after the band after us because it was on like a saturday so it meant like friday night 
I didn't even think I slept before the show. Like I was still up yeah. from Friday night after we got done. It was just like, I mean, it was like that all day. Yeah. <laughs> if I go on the road as a comic, it's tiring. You're sleeping in strange beds. You're going from gig to gig. As a band, I got to imagine it's even worse because you got lug gear, set up gear. When we're on the road, the, the saying is, hurry up and wait. You can say like, yeah, we were in Chicago and Chicago was cool, but it's like you get there and you get to the venue and you don't really know that area. So you can't like branch out that far from there. Yeah. Because you got to be there to like set up and do all that shit, but it's worth it. The 45 minutes on stage. Yeah, I know. Like I play better if the room is smaller and and there's less people, but it's just tighter. I totally get that. Eat off that. I love my intimate crowds. Like 50 is a sweet spot for me. Like about 50 people is really good. You know, like I feel like I'm almost connecting to every single person. You can see 50 people. Yeah. You know, as soon as it gets beyond that, it's more like a performance. It becomes less of like a, we're all in here gelling together and it becomes more, these are my jokes. Do you like these jokes? My mom flashed a comic at one of the shows. Were you the it wasn't me i wasn't the comic that would have been really weird yes it would have and it would have been really weird for you to share that (laughs) yeah 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 but my mom flashed me i was doing so (laughs) you're also a skateboarder you've been doing that for even longer than you've been a musician right so i started skating when i was 14 24 years you ever get worried that you're getting old and like your bones can't handle an alley anymore well we'll find out (laughs) yeah i I mean definitely i would you know maybe be able to skate like three four days top my my body does not want to heal anymore (laughs) yeah it's like we're we're done healing bro sit on the couch have a nice little chamomile tea and relax (laughs) yeah i definitely want to keep going as long as i can it's stimulating. I, I get something from it. I was in my hometown not too long ago because I used to skateboard. I, I don't know if I told you that. Uh, I was never like super good. I went back to these stairs, the like the very popular stairs that everybody used to skate at. I looked at them and I couldn't believe how small they were. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, these are the stairs. I was so scared to jump. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that was back when I was like. 13, 14, 15, and right. I haven't skated in a long time. I did, though, one time when I was in college, I just bought a deck for just to ha- have it. I was like, oh, I'm going to do this again. And that lasted like two weeks because it's a tough thing, man. You got to give your whole life to it or don't do it. You, know? you have to do it. You, yeah. It's like you can't just like think that you're going to pick it up and then, you know, ollie 12 stairs and like yeah. impress some chick or some shit like that. The number of times old dudes would walk by though and be like, I used to board. Look, can I can I see that? And then they would try oh, to yeah. get clip. How many times has that happened? Right. Yeah. I am that old guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll actually usually be like if you're skating or, or whatever and you pick your board up and then like you're walking past a bar or something like that. Yeah. Like somebody at a bar will be like, Hey, 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 hey let, me, let me try your board. Let me try then your board. I, let me try your board. Then they bust their shit. Yeah, it's like you fucking idiot, you know. I fell down too many times though. I, I can't take a beating. I'm a pussy, man. I was like, I'm going home. I have a Nintendo. Why am I even out here? You know? <laughs> There's definitely something like masochistic about being a skateboarder. I had gotten to a point to where it's just like I'm okay with like getting hurt. It's like I also was always broke, right? And like independent trucks back in the day were like 40 bucks and then wheels and bearings and the deck itself. And I, and I had friends, I'd get the hand-me-downs, the yeah. boards with the chip noses and, and the chip tails. And that would have been a great story. Like uh, he never had his own board. He would have to get hand-me-downs. And then he went on to be a legend. But not only did I have to get the hand-me-down board, but I was also, I also sucked. You know what I mean? <laughs> what a terrible movie that would make. I haven't been working because I fell. I, I just been like doing physical therapy. They have me doing cognitive therapy. All I can do is pretty much just rest. As much as I want this to like be rushed and like finished, I can't. No matter how much effort I put into it, I can't speed 
the process of healing up. Like my brain isn't doesn't isn't bruised anymore. I fell three stories. Yeah, take me back. Take me back. Yeah, yeah. Tell me the so, story. How did it first of all, let me tell you this. Randomly, my girlfriend goes, Do you know a guy named Cole Cooper? And I was like, <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, Yeah, what did he do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So random. And I was like, why? And then I heard and I was like, holy shit. And it was just like terrifying to tell me what happened. I was like helping a buddy out. Him and his girlfriend had a house and they needed it painted. It was in October, October 3rd. And like when the, well, it was the last day I was there anyway. I needed to paint really high and there was, uh, there wasn't a ladder tall enough. So I was like, dude, you know, like, what are we going to do? And he's like, well, I guess we can get scaffolding and you can sit a ladder on top of that and then oh, put that against and so we go and get it and the way it had to be set up the scaffolding was really close to the house so that the ladder could reach what i needed to be able to reach and i i remember taking a picture of it and texting my girlfriend like hey look at this gnarly setup i'm about to get on <laughs> you know just the mindset before it was like Oh shit. I've made way crazier things happen than this, you know, like yeah. in, in terms of like all my gnarly shit, like me getting on a ladder that's like really steep. I even asked my buddy when I got up on it to take pictures of me because it just seemed like so gnarly. Like 12 days later I wake up in the hospital and then I find out like what happened was he him and his girlfriend were going to go to a birthday party and I guess Right before they left, they heard everything kind of like crumble. So they found me and I was on the ground and then they kind of like woke me up and my ear was dangling off my left ear. Oh, it was shit. like just dangling. I had paint all in my hair, all on my face. And I got up and then I grabbed my paintbrush and acted like I was painting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So I was just like work mode, you know, I'm like going I back to work, boss. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And right before the ambulance came, like I wasn't, I stopped breathing. And, Fuck. and like when they brought me back, I guess like I immediately had a seizure. And so they called in to see if there's a helicopter close and there happened to be one. And then they brought me to the hospital. I found out that my ear got torn off the day before I left the hospital because a nurse came in and she goes, okay, I'm going to take the stitches out. And I was like, uh, I don't know what you're saying. She's like in your ear. And I look at my girlfriend and I was like, my, my ear. And my girlfriend's like, well, your ear was dangling off when you came in. And you were so busted up that yeah, you overlooked so, the fact that your ear was missing. <laughs> yeah. And, but it, so now it's cool. Like it, it's connected. It sits a little higher. Like I can feel it in my ear canal. Like yeah. it, it's not just like smooth in it, like drops a little bit. Yeah. And then my mouth was wired shut and I broke like three spots, Yeah, you know, and I'm missing teeth now. And like, yeah. And then, yeah, my elbow broke and then just, yeah, the brain injury. So I don't even know how I broke this elbow, but this side of my head got injured and this ear got injured. I have two plates in my jaw on my right side. So it looked, yeah, it you must've landed like a pretzel. There's been no picturing. grace in my fall whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must have been like, yeah, it had to have been the ugliest looking fall, <laughs> like skateboarding and just like living like total, like a total scumbag for like 14 years has like, you know, <laughs> helped me in this healing process because right. like, you know, you can be in all this pain and like, and shit like that, but you learn to like brush it off yeah. and like, just keep going, you know, like I've never like fallen and been like, you know what, fuck skateboarding, I'm done with it. And then just from like all my years of like, you know, sleeping on floors or couches or, or you know, not even having a place to sleep. Like, yeah, you I've always, conditioned it's so easy for me to like, keep gratitude, though, in like whatever, wherever I'm at. I have a roof over my head and, you know, my cats are stoked and like I, I got my girlfriend. I can right. like play car and stuff like that. So. Did you recover faster than they expected? I remember my girlfriend saying when she asked the doctor, she's like, so yeah, when am I going to be able to talk to him tomorrow? They were like, well, we, we don't know when you'll be able to talk to him. 
And then she's like, really? They're like, yeah, we, we just have to wait and see. And then when he wakes up, we don't even know if he's going to be able to talk. There is three ways that the whole thing could have gone. You know, it was I would have died. I would have been disabled or I would be where I'm at. When I first like came to, I remember telling the doctor, look, I'm a fucking drug addict. And so if I know that you guys are giving me drugs, but like, if I start asking you for more drugs, do not fucking give them to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would probably have tried to take advantage of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh yeah. I didn't have insurance or anything like that. And it wasn't even that kind of job. And like, you know, like my bank account was like at, maybe like $800 tops. And so right. like I, right before I got out, like my girlfriend, I didn't even know about this or anything. And she's yeah. like, Hey, just, just to let you know, like um, I, I started a GoFundMe for you. And I was like, I was like, you did. She's like, yeah. And she's like, do you want to see it? I was like, I, I don't really know about that, you know? Cause like, I, I just didn't feel like being let down anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then she's like, no, you know, like I can show you. And and then like where it was before I left was at like 48,000. And I was just like, Whoa. I, I can't even believe that. It was just really cool to be able to see like everybody helping out somebody that just wasn't, you know, like I didn't have without the help from everybody. Like I, I would not right. be able to like get by it's good thing that you pulled through but with those kinds of medical bills if you didn't have those people coming for you you might as well have not pulled through right right no the day that they wanted me to leave they said that it was there was a covid scare i had caught pneumonia in there what yeah so i had but i didn't get covid but like i caught pneumonia so i lost like 35 pounds yeah. And so I was down to like 139. 139 yeah. is skinny. Yeah, that, that's like eighth grade weight. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were ha- having me like do these cognitive tests. And I just like remember one of the questions was, okay, draw us a cube. All I did was draw eight squares next to each other. I was not ready to leave that place. You can't let this guy out on the street. Can't draw a cube. You know, <laughs> what if he has to leave here and draw a cube somewhere? Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> I couldn't do shit because I still had I had a tube coming out of my throat. Fuck, dude. You got yeah, and my and my mouth and my mouth was sewn shut. Even on like Thanksgiving, I I was like drinking my drinking my turkey. dinner. Did yeah. They, did they blend up some turkey and stuff? They did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I had blended turkey on on fucking Thanksgiving. <laughs> you look good for somebody who was just a vegetable it's weird because like now i have short hair because they had to cut my hair in the when you and i first met my hair was like my nipples yeah you you had long hair i used to look at you from the back and be like "Mm." you're like damn damn it's been good i just keep myself busy you know doctor's appointments physical therapy fucking gym stuff guitar my cats you remember your songs and stuff like that Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. And like, I was just like worried just about like normal stuff because there was like when I got out, like I was still slow. Just being active for me is like I I feel like it's one of those things that's like energy creates energy. So it's like if I'm doing stuff, yeah, I'm going to continue to do stuff. But what about you? What what have you been doing? I mean, other than, okay, I have gone out on the road a couple times to do stand up. Um, During COVID? Yeah. <laughs> I need it. Those though. crowds. <laughs> I, yeah. The people who show up don't give a fuck. So, how are you doing comedy shows in a place where you can't have a crowd? Or are you just oh. used to that? <laughs> Burn. Damn, bro. <laughs> Tell me more about the band. You got an album. It's called Conjuring a Death Creature. Conjuring a Death Creature. Yeah. It was about a time where Kurt and I both took acid and we each took seven hits each. We were both in Vermont and it was like fall time. So it was like super scenic and stuff. And uh, like we both had taken a hit each of acid and we were at the acid guy's house and I went to use the bathroom and I opened the door and the guy, he was passed out sitting on the toilet waiting for the acid to kick in. I was like, you know what? You want to just 
do the rest of that. And, and he was like, okay, he had it in the freezer. Oh, so shit. I went in the freezer. I split the, the remaining 12 hits in half. And then, so I took six and then he took six monsters. Yeah. And that was his first time doing acid. So his first time doing acid, he took seven hits. He was like playing guitar hero in the living room. <laughs> I was like looking at him from a distance and <laughs> he was moving all crazy. Like with the fucking guitar hero guitar. <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure that that uh, acid's kicked in, right? <laughs> he like turns around and looks at me and he's like, no. And I was like, dude, you look like a fucking death creature right now. <laughs> and and so it stemmed from that. <laughs> that trip was an interesting trip. There was a time when I had my iTunes. I only had your album and my album. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Love that. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Thanks, uh, thanks for the support. Yeah, of course, man. You downloaded my album, right? I did. All right. That's it. I, I remember, you know, it was going to like come out oh, and yeah. then you were like, yo, here it actually came out. And I was like, oh, sick. No, it's good, man. And, and it's cool. Like when you have something like that, it's just like this, this tangible thing, you know, yeah. proof. Yeah. Yeah. Something that yeah. you can, like, remember all those hard fucking gigs and all those like, Lonely nights and all that hard work. Now, now we got there this album. Nine ninety nine. Where can people find you? Bandwise, we have a Facebook page on Instagram too. It's like night under slash terror, and then uh, just for personal stuff, you know, like if you need painting or things like that, my Instagram name is bongwater nine nine nine. The album yeah. is Conjuring a Death Creature. That's right. And you can download it on Apple Music, which is where I got it. And you can also download my album. Sorry, I had to squeeze in my own plug. All right, that's it for the Low Budget Show. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you, Cole. Always welcome to come back. Uh, that's it. We'll see you next time. Awesome. Make sure you subscribe. Goodbye. Thank you. What were we talking about? The Low Budget Show with David Millard. I still love you.